What up my friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we have a fun one for you. And it's one of my favorite types of videos where I just talk about books. My channel is about recipes and hauls, but one of my favorite hobbies in the entire world is reading and I love talking about reading. So in today's video, we are going to do a deep dive into the top 25 most talked about books. If I've read them, I'm going to share my thoughts on them and whether I think they're worth you picking up. If I haven't read them, I'm gonna tell you what has stopped me or if they are pretty high on my TBR list. TBR being to be read if you're not crazy in the bookstagram world like I am. Now, in order to find out the top 25 most talked about books, what I personally did was I went on a bunch of different articles and then also just from me being on both TikTok and Instagram and the books that I keep seeing time and time and time again, I didn't do any fancy like spreadsheet where I put in percentages and figured out how it's talked about the most. I just did a little roundup of, like I said, the articles that I read as well as my own experience on social media and the ones that I think are talked about the most frequently. And with the speed of social media, obviously things can change all the time. But in this moment, these are the 25 books that I think are the most talked about on social media. I wanna preface this before we dive in by saying this will be completely spoiler free so you don't have to worry about me spoiling any of the titles. But I will maybe give a little bit of a summary just so you know what I got from the book and then share my thoughts and feelings on them. And I will also try my best to advise whether or not there was any explicit scenes in there in case you're not into spice because some of these books are on the spicier end. Without further ado, let's dive in because we have quite a few books to talk about. Shocking to no one, the top result that I saw on any of the articles that I was looking and probably the one that I see the most on social media as well is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This book is a fantasy romance, romanticy, if you will. This one I gave a five star rating. And at the time I set the spice factor to a level one. I read it in December of 2023. That's insane that it's been that long. And my thoughts and feelings have changed a little bit as I've read some other fantasy romance, and I'd probably up the spice a little bit and say it's more of like a two out of five. If you are looking to dip your toes into a fantasy book and you like action-packed type books, I would 100% put this book on your list. This book is in the top five best books I've ever read. I was completely engrossed from start to finish. And honestly, Iron Flame is not on this list, but the second book to Fourth Wing, I was just as engrossed and it's even longer and a little bit more complicated, but I still loved it just as much. I will link my Goodreads down below. That way, if you wanna go look at any of the reviews that I've left on these books, you can feel free. But since writing my review, a couple things that I do know, I read Fourth Wing in December of 2023. And then earlier this year, my husband and I actually listened to the entire audiobook anytime we were on a road trip. So we listened through the entire audiobook as well. So I've essentially read this book twice. A couple things that I want to note before you dive into fourth wing and i probably won't spend this much time on the other books by the way but this one i feel very passionate about if you don't like romance in your fantasy i would recommend not reading this book because romance is highly discussed in this book even outside of the explicit scenes there's a lot of discussion on attraction and things like that and i've had conversations with people who are very strict fantasy readers and that turned them off quite a bit so if romance being integrated into a fantasy novel isn't something you enjoy you're probably not going to love this one but if you're a romance reader who wants a little bit of action who wants some fantasy elements i think that you would love this book for me there's elements of like harry potter meets hunger games meets game of thrones almost there's so many elements from a lot of really popular type titles that are woven throughout this story that i think it would appeal to a lot of people so i think it's safe to say we understand that i definitely recommend this book with the caveat that if you're not into spice and you're not into romance this might not be the one for you but other than that full steam ahead go for it i absolutely loved this book the next one is the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed okay so this book was another five star read for me and one that i would definitely recommend the funny thing about this book is that because it was so talked about I never wanted to read it because I'm like the type that if something is overhyped, I tend to go in with such high expectations that it's always a letdown. So I had put off reading this book for quite some time. I had finally picked it up and then I was mad at myself because I just loved it. It 
It was a very, very special book. It follows a Hollywood icon who is meeting with a reporter to finally give the details of her life that have been sought after for years and years and years by other people. But she specifically seeks out this reporter and through her telling the stories of her life, both her and the reporter go through quite the journey. There was just something so special about this book. There was a lot that was unpacked in the book. It's not a light read by any means, but if you've read a Taylor Jenkins read before, you know that most of the time her reads are not on the light side. I honestly cannot remember if there was explicit scenes in here. I don't think there was, but I know there is a discussion of a sexual nature. So the topic is there, but I don't think there's explicit scenes in it. I read this book quite a while ago. I have since started leaving spice ratings in my reviews on Goodreads, but unfortunately this was read prior to that. This is definitely one that if you have ever been interested in like Elizabeth Taylor or any of those like Hollywood icons, you would probably love this book. The storytelling was exquisite, a definite recommend from me. For this next book, I'm gonna ask for a little bit of grace because this book, is very polarizing. This next book is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This book spoke to me and it, it's a very difficult read. It's not one that I could ever say I would recommend or not recommend because I think that you have to understand that this book has a topic that is of a very serious nature and it is very graphically spoken about. So I would recommend that you look up content warning prior to reading this book. I have a different take on this book than I think most people do. That doesn't mean that my take is the correct take and it doesn't mean that people don't have valid concerns with this book. But for me personally, when I walked away from this book, I did not feel that DV, this book is centered around DV. I'm not gonna say it because I don't know if that's gonna trigger something. I personally, when I walked away from this, did not feel that it was romanticized. There are people out there that have very valid concerns because when they read the book, they walked away feeling like it was romanticized. And I'm not here to discount anybody else's feelings because as readers, we all walk away with a different take. I feel that it was realistically represented. I think a lot of people looked for justice in the situation without giving spoilers. Nothing about this book was neat and ideal. Nothing about it was. It's a very messy book. It's a very raw book and to me, a very real book. But again, that's just my personal take on it. I cannot say, yes, I recommend reading this book. I would never put someone through the heavy topic that this book is if they're not in a place where they could comfortably consume this book. This was one of the most impactful books that I've read. I'm not a huge Colleen Hoover fan. I know a lot of people are like obsessed with her and then I know a lot of people don't like her whatsoever and have very strong feelings against her. I'm somewhere in between. I think she's a decent writer. I've loved some of her books. I've not loved some of her books. But for me, for this book, I felt it was incredibly impactful. It was a healing book for me. However, I am in a different stage of life. If someone has experienced anything personally, you have to determine what stage of your life you're at in terms of processing the topic that's in this book if you've been personally affected. This is why I asked for grace at the beginning of this conversation because this is a very polarizing book. I understand why it's polarizing. I respect everybody that is affected one way or another by this book, but these are just my personal thoughts. Oh, I forgot to give my rating. I gave it a five-star read. I do believe there are explicit scenes in this one, but they're not super heavy. So I'd probably give the spice rating like a one. I read this before I was doing spice rating so I don't have the exact and I haven't read this since 2022. That's my hot take on It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. If you have a different opinion on it, I just want to make it clear that I have the utmost respect for you. Don't blame you whatsoever. I can see all sides of the situation. This is just my personal take on the book. All right, moving on to something that is also kind of polarizing, A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J Maas. So A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J Maas is a book that I wish I'd ever read. I gave it a four star and Spice, I gave it a one. It is basically a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And I loved that element because I love Beauty and the Beast and I like how it was handled in this one because it felt like it was parallel to Beauty and the Beast, but not exact. It wasn't like a replica of it, but I got those elements that helped me stay connected to the story. However, this is an incredibly long series. By the time I got to the end of the series, I was very upset that I read any of them. And it doesn't end in a super messed up way or anything, you know? I just felt like the author was going through some type of a discovery in writing where she wasn't even sure what direction the book was going. So it just felt jarring because it felt like 
sometimes we'd head in this direction and then by midway point to the next book we'd be veering off to another path and I understand obviously that when you're writing there's going to be like an arc right this didn't feel like that it felt like zigzags so this is one that is very very talked about it's one that people are very very passionate about they love this book all I can do is speak on myself and my part, and maybe I'm crazy, but I would never recommend the Court of Thorn and Roses series to anybody. It just felt like a giant waste of my time, to be honest. Okay, so I think we've talked about that enough, and I apologize to any of the massive Sarah J Moss fan base that is out there listening to this. I know that I have probably ruffled feathers with that. I'm sorry, I'm not saying I'm right. I just didn't love it, that is all. Okay, so the next book that we're gonna talk about is The Son of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I have not read this book. So we're gonna we're gonna discuss what it's about and then we're gonna talk about why Kate hasn't read it yet because I've seen it a million times. Okay, so essentially this book is rooted in Greek mythology. It follows two dudes, Achilles and Patroclus, Patroclus. I'm not quite sure there. I'm so sorry. Anyways, it follows the two of them. They're besties. They're apparently getting trained when they find out that Helen of Sparta has been kidnapped and then they go on a journey to try and deal with that situation. That's the overall essence that I'm getting from the Goodreads little summary blurb that they give. Here's why I have not read this book yet. I am obsessed with the idea of Greek mythology. However, every single time I have tried to read a book that is rooted in Greek mythology, I end up being completely and totally lost. I don't know if it's the verbiage. I don't know if it's just over my head. I don't know if I'm too simple of a reader or whatever the case is. I just feel like I get completely lost. I want to try it so bad because so many people have said it's amazing. So if you have read this book, The Son of Achilles by Madeline Miller, please sound off down below convince me to read it because I have a feeling I'll love it once I dive into it. All right, the next book is going to be another hot take from me, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This one is by V.E. Schwab. This one I gave a three out of five. Most people rate this like a five star, so I don't want to say I don't recommend it, but I have to say I don't recommend it. The book spans several hundred years, and I feel like the character has more than enough time to grow and there was no character growth whatsoever. I also just sat there wishing for the end of the book the entire time that I was reading it, and I kept thinking that I was finally gonna understand why people hype this book up so much, because some people love it so much, and I just never, I never got to that point. There was definitely unique twists and turns throughout the book, and I felt like it was a very unique and refreshing read. It doesn't follow a typical plot line that you see in other books, so that part I enjoyed, and that's why I gave it a three. But at the end of the day, it's just not one that I could recommend. All right, the next book that we're gonna talk about is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This one I gave a four and a half out of five on stars, and Spice, I would give it between like a one and two. There are explicit scenes in this book. This book is a romance book. It's really rooted in a STEM environment. And I don't know, there was something about that that I absolutely love. I've never been into science or, or technology or anything like that, but there was something about having a quick, witty, incredibly intelligent female main character that just did it for me. I just love the way Allie Hazelwood writes. There's a few people out there that don't like it and they feel like she writes the same book over and over and over again. And I can kind of see what they're saying. There's definitely overlapping elements, but overall I think that's a plus because her books are so enjoyable to read. They just feel like a comfy, warm hug. So I don't know why people would be upset to read it over and over again, but if you don't like one of her books, then just don't read the others. I feel like she writes the plots in different ways and has characters that although they are rooted in kind of the STEM world, but overall I just love her books. I truly do. I, she's one of the auto buys for me. Every time I see a book from her, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to read it. Okay, so the next book was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I hope I said that correctly. This book, unfortunately, I picked it up three times, tried to read it three times, and just couldn't do it. I wanted to like it so bad. I love the concept of it so much, but I could not stand the character. The main character in this, something about him just drove me absolutely crazy. He just felt really like whiny and entitled. And I don't know if he grows beyond that. Maybe there's this excellent character development that happens in the book, but it just was enough to stop me because I was so frustrated and so irritated with him that I knew that it was gonna stop me from being able to enjoy the book in any way, shape, or form. I have heard that, I think there's on Amazon Prime or something, I think there's either a movie or a mini series or something like that for this book, and I've heard that that's excellent. So I might try to watch that 
and then go back to the book and see if maybe I can relate to the character a little bit more. But for now, it just was not a love for me. All right, the next book that we're gonna talk about is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. And this one came up on several lists that I saw. However, I had never personally seen anybody on social media talk about this one. However, when I went to look up these books on Goodreads, this one has over 1.1 million ratings. So I do know that it is a very popular book. It's just escaped my eyesight, apparently. So the blurb on Goodreads really doesn't reveal a lot of information. However, it seems that there's some type of a situation that happens with an accident and a group of friends set on a private island, and it says that it's a suspense novel. That has me intrigued. There's sometimes when I really enjoy like a suspense or thriller. I noticed on this one, one of my friends had read it. She commented that it's a pretty easy read and she enjoyed it. So this one is now on my radar. Let me know, have you read this book? Because apparently it is popular and it looks like people are either love it or hate it. So we'll see how I feel about it. The next one on our list is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that one correctly. So this one apparently involves a group of six outcasts and some type of a heist that happens and it's a young adult fantasy. Now, I hadn't heard of this one in particular, but I actually have another fantasy book from the same author that I'm waiting on from the library. I put a hold on it a couple weeks ago because one of my friend's husbands had read it and she said that he recommended it. So I looked it up immediately. So now this one has me intrigued as well because the ratings on this are incredibly high. It's got a 4.48 average rating on Goodreads and there's over a million people that have rated the book. That's pretty compelling. So I'm probably going to get this on the library one as well. If you've read this one, let me know if you loved it. Hopefully my uh, library will have it soon-ish. All right, the next one is called Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This one, first of all, the cover on this book makes me want to read it so bad. I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet because I have seen it come up several times, but for some reason I haven't picked it up. I don't even know if I've put a hold on the library or I have to check if it's available on Kindle Unlimited. This is something that I think I'm going to bump up on my priority list because it sounds really good. This basically follows a woman who gets a letter from her cousin that wreaks desperation and needs her to come out and help her with her husband at an estate in the Mexican countryside. And once she's there, she apparently uncovers a lot of disturbing things. If you've read this book, let me know your thoughts on it. The reviews on this one are not as high. There's almost 400,000 ratings on this one. It's a 3.67 rating. So it's not like the highest rated that is gonna end up on this list. This one is listed as a historical fiction horror. If I'm gonna read a horror book, obviously fall is the best time to read a horror book. So we're gonna get that on the list. This next book, I am so happy to have an excuse to talk about again because I am obsessed with this book. This is in my top five best books that I've ever read. This is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I cannot express how much I love this book. This is such a cozy read. It's such a whimsical and beautiful read. It just felt magical. There's a found family element to it. The characters were incredibly dynamic. I loved how witty it was. There were spots of humor. There were spots of heartbreak. I felt like I was just carried away in the story. It's just, I can't recommend it enough. I don't know what other words to use to describe this book to convince you to read it, but this really, really should be at the top of your list. If you happen to be into the Harry Potter Fantastical Beasts or whatever that whole series is called, you would definitely love this book. This is one of the books that as you walk away from this video, I hope you put at the top of your list because I loved it that much. I don't know if I need to specify this, but my score on that book was five star five star or a thousand out of five, actually. All right, the next book on this list is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This one is definitely on my radar. I just reread the summary on it and I'm like, Great, now I have another book that I wanna to bump to the top of my list. This one has over 800,000 ratings, 4.15 for the rating on Goodreads. So that's compelling. And the summary sounds really good. Essentially, there is a character named Avery who receives this inheritance. She does not know the person that it came from, and it's a mystery as to why she even got the inheritance. But in order for her to collect, she has to go to this man's house, and she has to be with the family that he ended up disinheriting, basically, to give her the money. And she has to, I guess, go through some situations while inside that house. That sounds like something I want to read. It says that like the estate is like crazy. There's puzzles everywhere and all of this stuff. So I am intrigued. It says that it's a young adult mystery slash fantasy slash romance. So there's a lot going on there, 
but it sounds like something that would definitely be right up my alley so let me know if you've read that one all right the next book was happy place by emily henry my favorite book from her is book lovers happy place i gave it a 4.5 out of 5 and i'm actually kind of surprised by that because i thought that i only gave it like a three and a half or a four but you know that's what i locked it in as and for spice i gave it a one out of five so this one I really like how Emily Henry writes, but I had a hard time with this one. It was a dual timeline situation, which is usually one of my favorite ways for romance. I like when it jumps back and forth. However, I'm also kind of picky about it because it's one of my favorites. And this one I did not love because I didn't connect with the characters when they were in the past tense element. I wish we had just stayed in the present day and then maybe done a couple flashbacks or something, but there was like full on chapters in the past and it just felt unnecessary. I felt like nothing was really getting discovered from the past and I kind of wish that it was more just a second chance romance type situation in present day. What I did love about this book was the setting. I'm originally from Massachusetts and we spent a lot of time in the state of Maine and this one is set in Maine and I felt like the writing on the setting was absolutely exquisite it and it just took me away it felt like an escape I felt like I was back in Maine and I have a lot of great memories there so that part I absolutely loved this is one that I would recommend adding to your TBR but it's not one that I would prioritize I would pick almost any other Emily Henry over this one personally I would start with book lovers that one was my favorite if you haven't read anything by her she does have spice in her books but it doesn't take up too much real estate so you can skim through or just skip the cha chapters entirely usually all right so the next one is called powerless by lauren roberts this one i see constantly and it's definitely on my radar but let me tell you why i haven't read it yet it's because i've been too lazy to look up and see whether or not this is a completed series that's literally the only thing that's stopping me I am the type that I need the series to be completed. I cannot do cliffhangers because especially with me starting to dabble a little bit more into fantasy, I tend to get confused if I've read like two books from a series and then that's all that's been released. So then I dive into something else and then book three releases and then I'm like, should I just reread books one and two? because I kind of don't remember what happened and then hope for the best and then I get a little bit lost because the details from other ones felt similar. I'm obviously drama. I'm obviously the problem here. So if it's not a completed series, I may just wait. However, people feel very strongly about their love for this book. So if you're one of those people, let me know if I should just get over myself and just dive into it. All right, the next book that we're gonna talk about is Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. This one, I only got through about six chapters before just calling it quits. It might've been 10 chapters. I could not stand this book. I A lot of people love this book. Apparently, if you're a Gossip Girl fan, which I used to be, you're supposed to love this book. I didn't love this book. I felt like the characters were obnoxious, completely and totally obnoxious. So I just gave up. I am the type of person I am pretty stubborn when it comes to books. So there's not a lot of books that I don't finish. If I don't finish it, it's for a very strong reason. Usually I can just get through it because I don't want to share thoughts on something that I didn't complete, but they were so obnoxious in the few chapters that I did read that it's something that I just wouldn't recommend to anybody else. I guess if you're looking for high drama, obnoxious people, more of like a hate read, then maybe you would love this. I know there's I know there's plenty of people that do love this one. I'm just not one of them. All right, the next one is The Atlas Six by Ol Olive Blake. That, that's gotta be wrong. Olive? Anybody know? I don't know. Anyways, The Atlas Six. This was one that I see everywhere. I see this book everywhere. So this one kind of involves a somewhat of like a competition type situation. There's a group of six people that are invited to this elite society and they have to prove themselves worthy. Basically, that's just my very simplified summary from what I'm getting on Goodreads. This book has been on my radar, but because of the fact that I've seen incredibly mixed reviews on it, I've been very nervous to dive into it. Apparently, this book was self-published originally so there's some people saying that it's getting rewritten and republished and I don't know if that's actually happened yet this is another case where Kate hasn't had time to go through and actually do her due diligence and figure out if we have the newest version or if I should wait a little while for it to get reconditioned type thing so if you read this book and loved it or hated it please let me know if I should be bumping this one up on the radar all right the next book is called Babel by R.F. Kuang Hopefully I'm saying that name correctly. This one I see constantly and it has a very high rating on Goodreads. It's got 4.18 for 275,000-ish ratings. So that's pretty pretty strong. I 
try to read the blurb and I really like walk away not really understanding but it's it looks like it's a historical fiction slash fantasy and it's basically about the main character struggling between two worlds he lives somewhere that he feels is a direct betrayal to where he's from and so he struggles in some way shape or form that's the essence that i'm getting from the summary part i don't know this one it's just nothing about the summary really like compels me to read it i have seen it come up quite a bit so that makes me interested and the ratings are really high but i just don't know if it's going to be one of those ones that if i can't even read the blurb and understand what's going on then maybe i'm not going to be able to read the book that always makes me a little nervous all right the next book that came up on the list is funny story also by emily henry that we discussed happy place about funny story i have not picked up i do have it on my library hold list but i keep snoozing it if you will i keep telling libby to deliver it at a later time and the reason being is because i didn't love happy place i am shocked that i gave that a 4.5 like doing this video i'm like i'm surprised i gave it a 4.5 but whatever Anyway, so because of the fact that I didn't like love Happy Place, I'm not like super drawn and motivated to read Funny Story. However, I do know that I love Emily Henry and a lot of my friends have read this and loved it. So I just need to get over myself. I'm going to make this commitment now on camera that the next time my library tells me it's ready and available for me, I'm just going to check it out. I'm not going to snooze it. I'm going to read that book. All right. The next book that is definitely on my radar, I actually downloaded it on Kindle Unlimited. I'm in the middle of a series right now, but as soon as I finish that series, this is gonna be the next fantasy that I pick up. It's The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This one I keep seeing everywhere. It's available on Kindle Unlimited, which is always awesome. This one follows somebody who's trying to prove herself in the high fairy court. It appears to involve betrayal, and apparently there's some like rescue mission because her sisters have been taken from her and things like that. So intrigued by that one. The next one is called A Little Life by Hanya. Yanigahara. I know that I probably didn't pronounce that correctly. I'm sorry. This one, I'm probably not going to read. I'm not going to lie to you. First of all, the cover of this book, I'm so sorry, but no, the cover of this book is not for me. The Goodreads rating average on this one is 4.32, over 700,000 reviews. It essentially follows four different people. And from what I understand, there are chapters where you don't know which character you're reading. And that just doesn't sound like it's for me. There's people that are saying that you have to do it, you have to get through it and all of this stuff. That just sounds like an investment I can't make. So I've heard that it's phenomenal. I heard that it's like impactful, life-changing. I cannot read complicated things like that. So it's just a no for me. If you have other thoughts and feelings on it, if you're like, Kate, you're wrong, you gotta read it please leave it down in the comments below. Convince me. Maybe you'll be the one to convince me. The next one that we're going to talk about is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This one I have read and I recently talked about in a wrap up. I've read it in either July or August. I think August. I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5. Two out of five on Spice. This is a romantic book. I loved it. I was completely swept away by this one. There hasn't been a book since Fourth Wing that sucked me in as much as this book did. I really, really enjoyed it. There is a lot of world building in this one, but it never felt overcomplicated. So I really, really appreciated that. I feel like a lot of times with fantasy, if you're not a fantasy reader, it's hard to keep track of characters and worlds and regions and all of that stuff. But I felt like the author did a really good job at trickling in the information in a way that was easy to follow, but still involved enough that it felt sophisticated. The spice on it is two out of five. If you're not into spice, I wouldn't even pick this book series up because it just gets stronger and stronger as the series continues. The only thing with this one is it is not a completed series, which as I mentioned before, is not something I usually do but I got confused by the book list on Goodreads and apparently the sixth book is not out yet. If you like romanticies, I would definitely recommend that book as, as long as you're okay with spice because that is definitely an element in the book and it's weaved in so much that you can't really skim through it or skip chapters. You have to read the spicy scenes because a lot of the plot and building happens in the spicy scenes. All right, the next book we get to talk about, I'm super excited to have an excuse to talk about and that is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I have a feeling this was Allie Hazelwood's answer to all of the people saying that she always just writes the exact same book because there is no way that you could compare Bride to any of her other books. So this one is a fantasy romance. I gave it a five star rating and Spice I would say is between like a two and three. It's definitely higher on the Spice rating. This one involves vampires and an arranged marriage and it almost has kind of like a mafia feel to it. So completely different from her like fluffy romantic comedies. 
However, there's still such like a witty banter about her writing in this one. And what's so funny is I'm one of those people that I love to love the characters. Like I want to be rooting for the characters. In this one, it felt like the characters were so dry and so unlovable, but I still loved them. It was like a complete enigma. I just walked away from this book completely shocked that I loved it because it was just so different from anything else I've read. It's fully entertaining. This was one of those ones that I kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off because I just didn't think I was going to love it. And I ended up absolutely loving it. So if you're looking for something to mix up your reading journey, it's fantasy, but I didn't feel like it was complicated. Like I said, it read more of like an entertaining mafia type read. So one that I would definitely recommend. The next one we're going to talk about is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This one appears to be a prequel to the Hunger Games series. I read the Hunger Games series probably 15 to 20 years ago, which that hurts my soul a little bit to say out loud. But I read it when I was a teenager and I can't believe it's been that long since I was a teenager. I did love the movies and I did love the books when I read them. I kind of want to reread all of them and throw this one in there too. It's not a priority though for me because I've already read The Hunger Games and I kind of know what happens. I have so many books that I want to get to that I don't know when I'll get to this one, but I definitely want to reread the entire series when I do it. Next one is another Taylor Jenkins reads. This one is Daisy Jones and the Six. This one was a little bit surprising to me. I think the problem that I had with this one is I went in with way too high of an expectation because it's set in the 60s. It follows a rock band. I've just always been really interested in that time frame. So I went in thinking that I was going to absolutely love it. And the vibes were definitely there. But this one I gave a three and a half out of five. It just wasn't a love for me. I tried to listen to it on audiobook. I thought that would be a good way to listen to it. And I did enjoy it on the audiobook because it felt almost like a documentary in a way. I think I probably would have liked it even less if I had read it traditionally. But maybe I'm wrong. I didn't love the the characters. I didn't love the moral dilemmas that they were going through or the way that it was handled. It just wasn't a love for me. But I know a lot of people really love that one. So I wouldn't want to say don't read it. I think that it's definitely an interesting read. And if you're into rock and roll and the 60s, the whole ambiance of that really comes through in the book. She does a great job with that part. But I just didn't like the characters or the situations that they're in. The next book we're going to discuss is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. I don't know if I said that correctly. I apologize. This one I gave a five star on. This one is a thriller. It's like a psychological thriller and I could not recommend it more if you're a thriller reader. I absolutely loved it. I think it is definitely worth the hype. I know there's a lot of people out there that disagree with me on that. I am the type of thriller reader that I have watched so much Criminal Minds and CSI and all of that throughout the years that I generally can predict where thrillers are going to go or at least like somewhat of a direction in this book didn't see it coming. The twists and turns are done so well. I have no feedback on how this book could have been done better. I just think that it's awesome. And if you're into thrillers, I 100% recommend. Okay, the next one is another Greek mythology type based one. And it's actually from the same author that we discussed earlier, Madeline Miller. And this one is called Circe. This one is another Greek mythology that I definitely have on my radar. I actually got a copy of this from a little free library because I knew I wanted to read it and it was in there. So I grabbed it, but I just haven't read it yet. And I don't know if I should start with the Song of Achilles first or Circe first and then try and do the other one. I don't think they're connected to one another. I think they're just by the same author. But if you've read both of those or one of those, let me know if I should start with one versus the other. The next book that is on the list is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This one I see come up so much. However, I have noticed that a lot of people that share their reviews on it discuss the slow nature of the book and I like I mentioned am more of a fast-paced person so that is why I have not yet picked up this book but it does sound intriguing it, it basically says that it follows a woman who has had a lot of regrets in her life and she's presented with an opportunity to be able to undo some of those regrets but it ends up causing some chaos that's the summary that I'm walking away from the blurb with. I have a couple friends that highly recommend this book. It's just one that I know I'll probably get to eventually, but it's just not high on my priority list. It's probably like medium priority. All right, the next one is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This one is definitely on my radar because it involves dragons, and I have found that I am a lover of dragons. I am basic, and I like a fantasy that has dragons in it. I think Game of Thrones just completely undid me, and I'm not talking the book Game of Thrones. I'm talking the TV series because I haven't read the Game of 
of Thrones series because I've heard mixed reviews on the series itself and that's a big undertaking. So this one though I keep seeing recommended by lots and lots of people so it's definitely on my radar. I think I have a couple others that I want to get to before this one but this is one that I will be reading sooner rather than later. All right and then the last one that we have to talk about is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This is a highly talked about one. This one I gave a four out of five on stars, three out of five on spice. If you don't like spice I would definitely not recommend this book because there is more riskier explicit scenes in this book than in other books that I've read so it's definitely on the spicier side. This one is rooted in a little bit of Greek mythology but also kind of feels modern in the way that it's set. It feels more of like a mafia romance. I felt like the first half was stronger than the second half. When it first started I thought I was going to be like this is a five-star read but then it like slowly trickles down. The ending kind of recovers a little bit. I felt like the chemistry in this book was absolutely on fire so if you like romances I really liked that element and I thought that it was very unique and there was twists and turns and things like that that aren't typical in a romance. So if you're looking to mix up your reading list and you're okay with spice, this is one that I would get on the list. All right, so those are the 25 most talked about books the ones that I recommend you read, the ones that I would not recommend reading, and the ones that I have on my radar. I would love to hear your feedback, whether you agree or disagree with me. I respect everybody's opinion because I think the beautiful thing about reading is that everybody can walk away from a book feeling a different way because we all interpret it in different ways. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to go back through my books playlist. I'll have it linked down below because I do monthly wrap ups on all of the books that I read in the month, and I generally read anywhere from like 10 to sometimes even 30 books in one month and I try my very hardest to seek out books that aren't talked about as often like the ones in this video. So if you're looking to discover new titles that are not the most hyped books or new authors that are not talked about enough in my opinion go check out those videos because I share quite a few in there. And I also have a book Instagram that's solely dedicated to book content. If you enjoy seeing more frequent wrap ups on the books that I've read or mini reviews, please feel free to check that out. That I always have linked during these book videos down in the description box as well. I hope I delivered whatever you were looking for when you clicked on that thumbnail. Hopefully you have your next great read to go find now and I hope you have a magical day. Bye!